Good morning. I am doing the ORE minute and we'll just go right into it. So the first one is Wikibooks and this is how it looks. And it's pretty straightforward. So here for English, there are 93,000 plus open content textbooks. So if we click here, you can browse um, by topic, by subject, So here's like anthropology for social science. There's some completed books. Here's some books nearing completion, half finished, partly, freshly started. Um, you can also click on like cookbook, for example. So you can find recipes and cookbooks. There are featured books. Um, then you can click on humanities, for example. And here's um, Guide to Harry Potter, United States History Book, Guitar. You can click on other projects within Wika, uh, within Wiki, um, Wiki Species, Data, News, Pedia, Quote, Source, Versity, and Voyage. Go into different communities or create communities. I'll go back to the main page. So here are three, they tell you they have 3,400 books. And so this is their like library stacks. So computing, engineering, languages, humanities, so they have law, math, science, they have um, health science, uh, recreational activities, some miscellaneous, immigration, culinary, transportation, again, social science, um, standard curricula, Wiki Junior is for um, K-12. And then let's say for health sciences, we click there we can then see some of the books that they have available. Geriatric medicine. So if we wanted to look at that book, we would click it. Okay, <laughs> it gives you some information. Um, so if you want this book, you would have to go, and of course with the internet, and you know, people um, start and start things. So we can come here and here's the book. It has a number of books, it seems. Um, you can click it. And then you can click download to download the book. Here are the chapters. What is geriatrics, aging health? And again, you can use these by clicks, clearly just choosing a chapter or a section within a chapter. And that's Wiki Books. Next one is the Project Gutenberg. And Project Gutenberg is a library of over 60,000 free books. And I like to start with um, Project Gutenberg if I'm looking for um, information that's static, um, you know, a particular philosopher, you know, their philosophy. It is the same as it was when their initial book was printed. Um, and so sometimes if you're looking for a theorist, you can come here to see if any of their prior works have uh, fallen into the public domain or if they have become part of Project Gutenberg, uh, which means someone digitized it and you can access it. So there's no fee or registration, no special apps, and you can find free books by searching browsing, looking at the bookshelf. Um, you can look at the uh, top 100 by popularity. So if you just kind of click there just to see which items have proven most um, popular, uh, you'll see the top 25, Frankenstein. So most of this looks like 
literary works. And again, this is where you can send students, you know, if you're using a classic, they don't need to buy The Great Gatsby. They can come here and read the book online. Um, there's some with images, there's some without images. Um, so they have a number of ways to access the book and um, read it. Here just means that they can send it to their Google Drive or their OneDrive or their Dropbox. If you're looking for something, um, just kind of want to browse to see what they have, you can then click the drop box that says um, search and browse, click book search. And do a quick search. So if we're looking for a non, um, there's no records found, which is interesting because I know I found his work somewhere else yesterday. Um, so I can the word black, see what comes up. So it was a black folk. So if I look at it by subject, um, black humor, black women, uh, black race, black in uh, black South Africa, uh, particular someone blacks in Canada, blacks in West um, British West Indies fiction, black Muslims. Um, Blacks in Jamaica, Black English, Southern States. Uh, and so I was trying to find a, let me, um, I have to look up how to spell somebody's name. This spelling is mine. See if this if any works by him. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Sure. So of course, if I type in Plato, um, just to make sure it worked. So if you type in the person's um name, if they have anything, it will pop up. I just want to make sure that feature works since I was not getting anything with the other two people. So that is Project Gutenberg. It's pretty straightforward. Um, you know, you can browse the bookshelf by clicking on bookshelves. Going a little slow. Um, and so here's education, it's fiction, language, science. Um, then a detailed listing of all bookshelves, anthropology, archaeology, architecture, astronomy, atheism. So even if you don't see um, like religion by you know itself, atheism uh, may be an option. And then if we come to R, you don't see religion. Excuse me, but you may see. Um, different topics related to religion. And that may be another way to find information. Because here's Christianity. Um, so again, this is Project Gutenberg. The next one is free books for doctors. And um, this is what it is. It's a OER, Promoting Free Access to Medical Books. And so here's information about COVID, Hermatology, different um, publications, and they are free. You see the PDF, uh, and some will come with an app. Like right here, it says um, PDF Plus free smartphone app. And so, for those of you who are teaching medical 
related information, I think you'll probably enjoy this site because you should be able to find something um, about, I click more and you see all of the topics that are here. So there is um, genetics, geriatrics, um, general textbooks, biology, biochemistry, um, cardiovascular disease, climate and health, even if you wanna connect it to environment. Uh, dictionaries, which may be helpful. Uh, education, technology. So if I click there, see that some are not all in English. So you can use the filter to make sure you filter English only if that um, is necessary. So here's one principles of epidemiology in the public health practice. Pathology, neuroscience, nutrition, neurology, neurochemistry. And so when we think of um, healthcare or mental health or counseling, um, there's psychiatry, psychoanal psychoanalysis, psychology, um, psychiatry, hmm, sociology. And it tells you how many there are. So if I click on sports medicine, there's this item. So these are articles on sports medicine. So if I'm looking at the knee, yep. so if I looked at hip dislocation, give me some background information. And then it gives me to another site. Some of these will take you out and you may then have to register for a free account, but um, this one comes from WebMD. So that is um, free books for doctors. And it covers, again, you can click on topics to see the topics. So it's pretty straightforward, it's not a whole lot of, <laughs> Not a whole lot of extra um, clicking. Here's book alerts that you can sign up for and subscribe. Um, click on new. Um, that shouldn't have taken that long. So. You can explore that site. The next one is um, the Smithsonian Open Access. And you can download, share millions of images without asking. So if you're looking for some amazing photos that are high quality, um, that will work in your um, presentations without them seeming you know, to be blurred or um, pixelated, you know, this is another source for you to look. And it's just for um, 2D, 3D digital images. And this includes images and data from across the 19 museums, nine research centers, libraries, archives, and the National Zoo. Um, there's a video that gives you a little more information about it. And here you would just, you know, depends on what you're looking for. Just kind of go, go for it. Um, one of the collections, some of the collections that I enjoy that they have, um, I think it's the American Museum, the, the, the Museum of American History. They have like the, um, almost every museum had, you know, like the, the African American Museum, the American, the Native American. They generally have like um, Relia, media 
um, materials. And one of the collections that I always try to look for at all these different museums are the um, buttons, because I just, I love buttons. <laughs> I just kind of like looking at the, um, like the protest buttons or, you know, the people, you, they may have had a full jacket full of buttons they collected about particular issues. And so they'll have a picture of the jacket, but then they'll actually have the buttons that you can see. I don't know, it's one of those things I like. Um, so if you're looking for, you know, just something to add some creativity and um to your slide decks um, and something to kind of spark interest or even a conversation, um, Frederick Douglass, like this photo here, uh, I think Frederick Douglass is the most photographed African American in history. Um, something like that. He ha he has a it's a claim. I can't get the. I think it's something like it's related to him having the most photographs from a particular pe time period or something. Um, but you know, this is a wonderful picture to you know add to a, a slide. And of course, you can talk about so many things. It doesn't have to relate to African American history. Um, it can relate to even treatment of. Um, slaves, you can tie it to excerpts from his novel, um, even if you were doing like a movement um, in the East. Uh, so many different ways to use photos. The um, timelines, instead of having words, you can use pictures. And so again, um, come, having a resource like this to find these open photos that you don't, you, you can give attribution, you can say, you know, this comes from the Smithsonian but you don't have to seek permission to use. Um, you can repurpose, you can edit. Um, and again, you can't do that with all photos. So this one gets you um, pretty clear of any copyright violations because it tells you upfront that you can use them. All right. The last one, is um, Open Michigan. And here it is um, where University of Michigan provides um, access to its research, teaching, and creative works. So you can find materials to use for learning or teaching. You can share a journal article or data set. Um, and you can connect to other like-minded people. So we can click on find, walk you through, um, find open education resources, find open data, find open publications, um, find open content. So if you're looking for a data set for your students, you can click here. And here are some examples that they provide. So like Twitter um, had, maintains public data, um, Amazon Web Service has public data, um, US government, um, ICPSR, which we are a member. So we do have this um, database on our database page. The deep blue data is um, data developed and used to support research at University of Michigan. But just to give you an idea, if we click here, here's the Twitter data sets. And yeah. <laughs> so you can click there and find. You can um, request information. Um, or you can click and just kind of delve in. I, um, this is one of those sites that, you know, I would tell you the same thing I'll probably tell students, you know, set aside some time to explore. Um, it's probably not gonna be the quickest thing you do. So um, open education resources, if I click there, they have it by school, college, or unit. So if I'm looking for public health, I can click here and I'll see the courses that are available. Um, introduction to Health Informatics. I get the class and then I get the materials. So I get the syllabus I can download, handouts, 
lectures. So, and then in, uh, in this way, it operates very much, very similar to other sites we review. That is Open Michigan. Get back to it. All right. Thank you for your time and attention. And again, there's only one more of these, and I will be sure. <laughs> Um, to let you to send that one next week. And that would be the final OER minute for the semester. Thank you.